Well, hi there. What I'm going to make is what this project is. It's going to be a book that holds um, homemade washi tape. I have not made any yet because I have nowhere to put it. Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these staples out um, so that I can have these pages all in one piece. So anyway, this is the, um, the inside and this is the front. So the first thing I'm going to do, and I'm just going to grab a sponge. Um, this is my gesso in a bottle. I have laid down here three coats of gesso just because I really wanted to make sure that um, the uh, it didn't the the cover didn't pop through. I'm going to put down now um, some dark chocolate by Americana. Well, I'm hoping this looks a little different from the last time you saw it. Um, did a couple changes, added a few things. Um, what I did, you remember I painted this. Um, see the spine right there? What I did to reinforce it from the outside, I'm going to reinf I reinforce it from the inside. But can you see that? Okay, what that is, is cheesecloth or gauze, whatever you're able to um, get your hands on. And I laid it down as such, enough to cover, you know, the whole length of my spine. And I put it down using my matte medium. Uh, painted over it to match um, to match the cover. Now I am going to do a texture over the top of this with tissue and this will probably show through a little bit but I think it's going to add a little dimension and kind of make it stand out a little bit. Um, this is what I did. First of all I gessoed around here around my edges and then painted it and you know what I need to get my brush ready here because we're going to paint something while we're sitting here without thinking. Anyway, gessoed it, painted it, and then I realized I wanted to um, also reinforce the spine from the inside as well. Hence the duct tape that I got. Actually, I didn't get it. My wonderful husband went out and got it for me because I asked him really nice. And I said, honey, please, I need duct tape for my book. Would you please go get me some duct tape? I'm all out. And guess what? He came home with duct tape. I married a good man. He brings me duct tape. Anyway, so I laid my duct tape down here to reinforce this. I'm also going to use the duct tape to reinforce the um, the uh, pages that go in, the signatures and all that. So, so now that that's all done, I'm going to lay down my Americana dark chocolate. So this is my spine and I'm going to dry this up real quick before I put another coat on. So I'm telling you, I'm really, really, really loving this Americana paint. It really does the job. Tomorrow I'm going to be doing some jelly plating with my granddaughter. I promised her a jelly plate date. I know how many four. Well, actually, you know what? Oh my gosh. 
She's going to be five next week. She's going to be five. How did that happen? How did my oldest become 27 and my baby become 24? And my granddaughter's five. I just don't get it. I'm only 29. <laughs> Do you believe that? Do you believe that? I wouldn't. <laughs> Actually, you know what? My 20s were a lot of fun. My 30s sucked. My 40s were a blast. I'm not sure about my 50s yet. I'll let you know when I'm done with them. Right now, they're full of menopause and hot flashes. Let's dry this up. Not need to be perfect, but I just wanted to make sure it was dry. And it feels pretty dry and warm. Yeah, but you know, I mean, my 20s, man, we had a blast. We really, really did. We got, I mean, my husband and I were, well, first we were single, <laughs> but we were dating. We had a lot of fun. And then, um, you know, then we all got married and bought houses and had babies all in our 20s. And I mean, we all played hard you know, in our, before we had our babies, you know, I got married at 21, didn't have my first baby until I was 25. So for four years, you know, we really got to have a lot of fun. You know, like I said, then the thirties hit, man, that was, that was, that was rough. I do not want to go through my thirties ever, ever, ever again. They just, they sucked. They just sucked. But then my 40s hit, and I'm telling you, 40 was like a coming of age for me. I don't know. It was like I just kind of hit this thing in my life where I was just like, you know what? I'm 40. I am who I am. If you don't like me, take a hike. I don't care if you're a family or a friend. If you don't like me, hit the road. You know, I'm not changing at this point. I am who I am. And if you don't like it, there's the door. Don't let it hit you on the ass on the way out. Sorry, but you know, I think I spent a lot of years trying to make other people happy and in turn made myself miserable. And, um, you know, anyway, sorry, didn't mean to get off track here. All right, so this is all dry. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna get the um, tissue paper and prepare it to go onto this. So I'll be right back. All right, here we go. We got my tissue. Um, I've already taken it and crinkled it. Now I'll roll it up. I'll roll it up again. I hope that's not too loud. Just to give it some more texture. And real quick, this side, I know you can't see it in the camera, but one side is like smooth and one side is like paper, like, um, looks like it would be more absorbent, but I'm going to put the, the smooth side down because I'm going to do a wash over the top of this when it dries. So I want this side to be more absorbent. So we're going to start with this part here. And we're going to use the, um, I don't want to tilt this, the, the, wait a minute, I'll just take the lid on real quick. This is the decoupage um, in matte, is what we're going to use to put this down. And we're going to use two pieces, and I'm going to put this on generously, especially over this part of it where the um, spine is where I have the um, cheesecloth. See that's the one thing that's wonderful about menopause. You forget your words. It's horrible. I'm going to kind of line this up with that edge right there. 
I'm going to kind of squish it a little bit because I want it. I want that texture. Now we did this in mixed media morsels if you're following that with cat hand. But like I said, that is a texture that I, this is a technique that I have done before. And I just love it. Get down there. Try and get all the bubbles out. Get everything pressed down. That's why I used a lot of glue. Because I really want it to press down on there. Want it on there good. I see some flaps. I'm going to if I can fold some stuff over, I will, like right here, right there, get down, get down, get down. So anyway, I didn't mean to like go off on you guys, you know, some of you guys in your 30s, might be having a blast. For me, it was just a real traumatic time in my life. It just wasn't any fun. But, on the other hand, I guess I shouldn't complain because my 30s really kind of defined my 40s. See how the brown's starting to come through on that? Can you see that? When this dries clear, You'll see better. There's a lot of glue on this. All right, I'm gonna glue this edge down here. give this a little bit of a heat set and then um, we're going to trim it and flip it over and then we're going to do something else. So I won't let you, uh, I won't ruin your ears with having to listen to my heat gun. So I'll go ahead and get this pretty dry and then trim it and then we'll get over to the other side. I'll be back in a minute. <gasps> so I forgot to turn the camera on. <laughs> Luckily, I only got the corners done, but I just want to show you the other side. It's not dry, but it's almost dry, but you can kind of see what I'm talking about. See how that's, there's still, you know, wet pockets of glue and those will dry. It'll probably take overnight, but they'll dry. So what we're going to do, it's dry enough. I can turn it over. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue our edges down kind of um, like the same way you would do um, a Christmas package.
Well, I've pulled my sides all over and I'm just going to let this dry for the night. Yeah, I think I'm liking that. It's just adding just that little bit of texture that I wanted. I love using a sponge. It really um, just does, it adds depth or it just adds a nice texture. I just love it. I use it a lot in a lot of my techniques, a lot of my projects and stuff. All right, that looks good. Ooh, let's wipe up that. I think I need to put something down on that, shouldn't I? Hello, deli paper would be good. Okay, I'm going to dry this up. I'm going to flip it over and do the other side. So I'll be right back. Okay, I've got this all flipped over. Put some deli paper down. And let's just kind of get this with the sponge. And I'm not done aging it yet. Okay, let me give this a quick heat set. And then we're going to do one more thing to it. And then we'll get it ready for collaging. Use this. Now I'll show you how I do this. It's just real simple. And I'm just going to go over the, the brown with the black. Not that it'll make that much difference. but I'm just rubbing this over the raised parts. You know, the wrinkles that were left by the, the um, tissue paper. Yep, that's all I'm trying to catch. And it just adds, once again, another layer of the texture. Okay, there we go. Sped through that for you. Boy, this really turned out pretty. Turned out real pretty. Alrighty. Now, well, here's some papers that um, I coffee dyed. I love them and they have really got a really aged and can you hear it? Cool. But you know what? They're looking light for this book. They're looking kind of light. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to spray them this out of the way. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this one as my guinea pig. I'm going to take a mini mister. 
I need some alcohol. All right, I think I'm going to try my vintage photo. I've got a rinker here. Let's see if I can open this without spilling everything everywhere. I'm just going to add one drop. And the reason I'm just doing one drop, I'm going to do one at a time because I don't want it to be too dark. I don't want it to be too light. I want it to be just right. Excuse my dog. Evidently, well, you know, the wind's blowing. Dry this up real quick. Do we see a difference? Not much. Might have to go two drops. You know what? I think I'm going to go three drops. Vintage photo. One, two, three. Whoa, right to this. Right to the top, tippy top top. I think I'm going to give it one more coat and then I think that'll be good. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fast forward through all of this because I'm sure this is like so exciting for you.
decoupaging in the inside and here's what it looks like. All done. It's all done. Um, I stained the papers. Um, first I coffee dyed it, but then I stained it and it dried nicely and then I took a brown stays on um, ink pad and just like the front where I did the, the black inside I did the brown. So what I think I'm going to do now, um, never done this before, but I'm going to do it anyway. It won't hurt anything. I'm looking for my special brush. I am going to seal this. Well, before I open it, I'll show you what this is. It's the Americana Decor. It's a cream wax. And what it'll do is it'll protect this, um, the outside, and it dries clear. I don't know if it's going to give it any kind of a gloss. So, and it's supposed to dry quickly. That's all right. While it's drying, I'm going to show you something else that we're doing. So I'm just going to be fast about this. I'm not going to be. I have here are going to be my signatures that are going to go inside my, my folio. These are six wax pieces of wax paper and if you double this the measurement on this is eight so I cut it 16 and folded it in half and the length was 10 and three quarters so I cut 16 folded it in half I did use a bone folder to really get a sharp crease on that and then to reinforce that um, I'm adding duct tape to the crease here so that way um, it'll hold being sewn together in my book that I'm making for it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish putting my um, duct tape on my um, on my creases on the seam for the binding for the spine to get sewn in and then I'll be back there I wanted to show you how I put the duct tape on the crease um, because it can be kind of tricky I'm trying to remember how I did this I put down a piece of black paper here so that it would be easier for you to see. And I will tell you, this is really kind of sticky. And I apologize for my shaky hands. I've had a lot of coffee today. Ah, oh, let go. That is the hardest part, honestly, is getting the tape off your fingers. All right, there we go. Oh, did it. So what I do is I've laid it down and the straight edge is closest to me. And I'm just going to kind of lay it down here about right where I think it's about halfway. And then I'm just going to lay it down like such. And then I'm just going to turn this around and fold the side over. this over here. Okay, I'm going to take my bone folder and just give that a real good press. It's not necessarily even per se, but you know, I, I, it doesn't really matter. What matters more is that it's going to give this um, some strength. And then I just cut the excess off on the edges and that's it. 
that's all she wrote. Now I have to go do this to the rest of the pages. But I just wanted you to see real quick how I was doing that. All right, so the wax on here has dried. And I've just kind of been buffing it and rubbing it a little bit. And there's not really a shine to it, but it definitely is adding, um, it's added a, gosh, just a feel to it that it's just, um, it's soft. And um, it just makes this feel very durable. What do y'all think? Pretty cool. Pretty cool cover. See, like I said, it's not terribly glossy, but it's got definitely a little bit of a sheen to it. And it just, I wish you could feel, you would never know that this is a magazine yeah, cover. Yeah, way cool. Way, way cool. All right, I have my two signatures all done and ready to be binded in here. So they're gonna go in here like such. And I'll probably have to do some trimming, as you can see, because the um, the duct tape, of course, added space. But that's all right, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. So what I need to do right now is, I need to get my template made and then I will show you how I take care of all that. So I'll be back. Okay, I know I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, at least video wise. I wanna show you what I've done and I'm gonna zoom you in as best I can. I'm not gonna be able to fit the whole thing here. I'll just do like the top half. This is my template. I have marked, and actually this is the bottom, but I have marked every half inch and you'll notice there's three lines, three holes across, one, two, three. The line down the middle with the dots is going to be where I poke the holes for my signatures. The lines on the outside are going to be where I poke my holes to cross stitch the signatures in. It's kind of funky, but bear with me. But I went ahead and cross and poke the holes in here. <clears throat> I have not done the middle yet because like I said, those are for the signatures. So I'm just gonna go ahead. I've already secured these down with my binder clips. And what did I do with my pokey tool? Here it is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. And remember, we're going through this. It's kind of thick. So I'm going to move this down a little bit. I don't know if you can see. I might have to. I might have to pull you guys out just a tad. Because so I don't want to be totally off my um, my mat that I use for poking. All right, so I'm gonna start up here. Notice I've given um, a half inch at the bottom and a half inch at the top. So anyway, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and start poking through. And I'm gonna give it, you know, a pretty good poke because it's pretty thick. Okay, I'm gonna finish poking these out. You don't need to sit here and watch me poke 20, 20 holes, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish this and then um, I'll be back and we'll be poking the holes in the signatures. Be right back. Okay, I finished poking my holes in my um, in my folio on the outside lines here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take these clamps off because I use them to keep 
my um, stencil in place and because this is a pretty thick it's a pretty thick um, substrate I'm going to go ahead and take my pokey tool I'm going to go through by hand again just to make sure that those holes are going to be good and ready for my needle. All right, I'm going to go ahead and finish poking through here to make sure these are all good and ready. And uh, I'll come back when I'm all done. Okay, what I have here now is a dictionary. And that's what I use to um, poke holes in my signatures. And what I'm going to do is try and get them as even as possible. And they pretty much are the same size, same length, I should say, as my dictionary. And here is my template. I'm going to set the template right in here. That bottom is not going to be, yeah, it should be all right. What I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to take my bone folder and just really make sure that that's in the crease real well. And remember, we're going through duct tape. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to go all the way through. I'm just going to give it a little twirl. Oh, look. You know, all these things happen. All right, where were we? I'll try this. A little bit bigger. I think it'll get the job done. All right, let's see how good or bad we did. I'd say we did pretty good. Did we get all the way through? So bring this one over. Again, I'm going to line these up as best I can. bottom. Okay. Make sure this is down in there real good. I have felt this move. Let's see how it's moved from the top. Well, we just have to do the best we can. Whew, that was a workout. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We'll figure it out. This is a cluster down here, but you know what? That's all right. Well, hello there. We are ready to sew in our signatures and I've done, I've done a little bit of prep work before I turned on the camera. What I've done is I've clamped in, this is the first signature. This is my second signature and it's clamped in halfway through. So this is, you know, 
like, you know, in the middle, you know what I'm saying. So I'm noticing that my holes are not lining up um, as well as I want, they should have. And I realized what my mistake was. This is um, a rookie mistake. Um, I shouldn't say that. You know what? Everybody makes mistakes. It's not, you know, earth shattering because we'll muddle our way through it. But when I had these in my dictionary to punch the holes, I should have, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. I should have clamped these into the book to hold them steady, the signatures, and I didn't. So they moved all over the place, especially since, duh, they're slippery. It's wax paper. But you know what? Um, live and learn. We'll, we'll muddle, our, muddle our way through it. Nothing, um, nothing's ever perfect. And if it is, then, you know, I don't want perfection. I just want whatever I made. All right. So what I'm going to do is use some waxed linen thread, but I have an alternative for you. Hold on. Ugh. What you could do, first of all, I had a hard time finding this. Um, but what I ended up doing, and I can't remember if it was Joann's or Michael's, but either place, um, if you go to, first of all, I didn't find this in the notions department where all the thread and everything is at, but where I did find this was in the, um, upholstery area where they would sell, um, upholstery needles and thread, like to sew buttons into, um, a couch or, you know, a pillow or whatever. But um, that's where I found this. It was relatively inexpensive. Um, the other thing you could do is get um, Baker's Twine if you don't have um, access to that. Or you could get um, twine of any kind. And I picked this up. This is wax. And this is what quilters will use. And all you need to do is just run that through here. There's like these little slots. There's like little slots there. And that, that will also wax your thread. So if you can't find this, this might be another alternative that you could use. It might be easier to find. Like I said, it took me a while. Um, all right. Well, let's get started on this bad boy here. And since I know it's probably going to take me a while to do this, because I know I'm going to muddle through, <clears throat> I'm going to get the first few holes done, and then we're going to go into fast forward. And it would help if I could thread the needle. So one thing I like about tapestry needles, they have really big eyes. And, uh, you know, the older you get, the harder it is to see. So I'm going to give myself a good amount to hold on there. And I'm going to give myself a generous amount. I'm going to go one, two, three, four. I'm going to give myself four lengths. Um, I'd rather have too much than too little. Let's set that aside. Okay, now, da 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 da. Here we go. Here's the beginning. And now I'm sweating. <laughs> Better take off my sweater. You know, this happens when you're my age. You're warm, then you're cold. You're warm, then you're cold. Okay. All right, so first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to go in through my first hole. Like I said, these are really wonky holes. And I may end up having to clean my needle quite a bit because it's, um, like I said, this is duct tape, so the sticky's still there. All right, and what I want to do is I want to clamp off my tail so it does not go anywhere. So I'm going to clamp this off. You, sir, are not allowed to go anywhere. There we go. And you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, 
I think what I'm going to do, just because this paper is so floppy and in my way, I'm going to, these pages that are um, on the side, I don't care if I put a crease in these or not, it really doesn't matter. Actually, if I do this and do this, yeah, no, I don't want them together, I want them separate. Sorry, I'm trying to get the clips open with my mouth. <laughs> See, it's good for something besides talking. Ay, ay, ay. All right, so I'm going to come down through here. I'll pull tight. All right, now this is my second signature, okay? No, that's the back. That's the front. So I'm going to go down the first hole in my second signature. And I'm going to come up through the second hole. In my first signature. And I'll pull tight. And I need to get it through. Sorry about my phone. Forgot to put it on vibrate. There we go. So I'm going in through the hole of my second signature. So let me flip this around just so you can see. Here's the start of our X. I'll try to bring you in a little bit. You see? So let's get the first one done here and then we'll say, oh, yay. <laughs> All right. So now ugh, I can tell this is going to be a process. My hands are going to be raw. Okay, pull tight. Okay, and then we're going to go through that first hole. Pull tight. Mm -hmm. All right, where did I come out at? All right, so now I want to come up through here. I want you to come up through the second hole of the second signature, which would be creating my X. Come through. I find it's easier actually to just come through the um, 
to come through the spine and then through the signature right now just because of all the duct tape. I'm going to turn this upside down so I have a little bit better leverage. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over. So there's our first X. And then we're going to do this all the way up the spine. Now, the instructions that I saw were that you then take the tail and tie it off so that we don't have to worry about it anymore. So pull it tight, tie it. I'm just going to do a regular knot here. Two and one more for good luck. Okay, then I'm just going to snip that off. So it's not in my way and then it'll melt it kind of together there in case you couldn't see. It's tied off. All right. So that you don't have to sit here and watch this tedious process in regular time. I'm going to go ahead and put this in fast forward and on mute so I can listen to some music and you'll get to listen to some music. So I'm going to go, going to go ahead with this process and uh, I'll see you on the other side. Enjoy the music. My fingers hurt. They hurt. This stuff is really, um, number one, remember to um, clamp these down when you're um, poking the holes for the spine. 
get all these clamps off here. I'm going to try and move. I wonder if I can move you up a little bit. I feel like you're really close. As you can tell, it's really windy outside. I don't know if you can hear the wind whistling through my windows, but. I know I'm going to have to trim the pages on this. That's all right. Good grief. I just want to make sure this wasn't going anywhere, don't I? Didn't I? So there's my first signature. And here's my second signature. Just making sure everything's good and tight. And here it is. I just need to put a title across here. And I want you to see the um, there we go. I did it. I did it. Yay. This has been a such a work in progress, but I so love it. So, so love it. It turned out spectacular, and I just, um, I just love this. So now, all I have left to do is, well, trim these pages a little bit, and then um, I think it's time to uh, make some homemade washi tape to put in here so that I can use it in my ideas, my books, but yeah, these all, these are all perfect, absolutely perfect, and it'll loosen up with time as well, I'm sure, and it's okay, I don't mind if these are a little wrinkled, number one, they'll flatten out. Not a big deal. But look at that. Now something I can keep my washi tape on as I make it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that will end today's video and Thank you so much for sticking with me on this. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you learned something. I hope it gave you an idea um, to do something crafty or creative in any way, shape, or form that you enjoy. Um, please don't forget to um, like, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and uh, please be sure to leave me a comment. And um, I love to get comments and uh, I will always do my best to answer everybody back. Boy, that that just really turned out cool. That's just, look at it this way. <laughs> so cool. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a great day and um, take time to enjoy your day.
Thanks so much, everybody. Bye.